Hello everyone, I'm Robin the Delta Crafter and I want to thank you for joining me for another video on my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be making some Love You Valentine's Day mugs using a couple of products from Honey Bee Stamps. Let's jump right into making this card. We're going to be using the Mugs and Kisses die set from Honey Bee Stamps along with the Love You die set as well. Both of these sets are a little bit older, but these are definitely sets that you want to keep in your stash and have around because they're both very, very versatile. As you can see in this die set, there are quite a few different pieces um, that can be used, and I personally think this, this die set could be used year-round. So I'm going to show you one of those ways here uh, by using it for Valentine's Day. I have a couple of other videos that I, where I show using this uh, die set for some uh, Christmas and winter cards, and I'll be sure to link those in the description below. One of the things I love most about this die set is that there is mugs that are, have a left handle and a right handle. So they're perfect for making a set of mugs, which is what we're going to do today. So I'm pick, figuring out uh, which mug I want to put on the pink cardstock or in the red cardstock. And I'm going to take those over to my die cutting machine and cut those out. And while I'm over there at the machine, I'm also going to go ahead and cut out some marshmallows and a few of the hearts. You can see here that I cut out the mugs several times because I want to layer them up to give me some dimension. Now I'm going to tr give my um, hearts a little bit of splatter using some white gouache. And fun fact, I didn't know that this white gouache actually has two ways to open it. You can open it the way you see here, and then there's another way um, to open it the, that allow you to have like a little nozzle. Didn't know that at this time. I know it now, so I'll know how to use it going forward. So I'm going to take a little bit of that white gouache, put it on my paintbrush, and place that onto an acrylic block. I'm going to bring in my uh, distress sprayer with just some clean water, and I'm going to apply that water to my gouache. That's going to thin the gouache out, but it's going to still maintain the opaque nature of the gouache, which is what I love. So I'm going to load up my paintbrush. I'm just going to tap my paintbrush and make some splatters all over these, this uh, pink and red heart. I want to make sure I get a good coverage so that I have... Um, that the, the effect really shows up. You can even use the side of your box. And this is just a cardboard box that I've had some products delivered in that I'm using as my splatter box. Now I'm going to create the background panel. To do this, I'm going to be using a couple of Distress Oxide spray stains. I'm going to be using Picked Raspberry and the brand new Lumberjack Plaid. You can just press the nozzle down just a bit to get these large splatters like I'm getting now. When I bring in the Kitsch Flamingo, I'm going to press the nozzle all the way down and it's going to give us a nice uh, dispersal of the spray stain and give us a great amount of coverage. So I just wanted splatters of the red and a good amount of the pink. Now let's get a close up look at this panel. I don't use distress spray stains that often, and I don't know why, but I think I might have to change that. I want to make sure that my panel is completely dry, so I'm going to hit it with my heat tool. I don't want to run the risk of running my hands across that panel and smearing, my, uh, smearing the paint on the background, so hitting it with a heat tool will help it dry a lot quicker. Let's move on to the next steps. So you can see here that I have my mugs. Off camera, I went ahead and glued all the red mugs together and most of the pink mugs together. I want to be able to kind of tuck some of the marshmallows into my cup and kind of make it look like they're sunken down into the cup. So I'm taking an X-Acto knife and cutting along the impression that is made by the die for where the, um, the cup kind of separates itself from the inside of the cup. And so by doing this, I'm now creating a little pocket that I can tuck my um, marshmallows down into once I get to that part of the assembly. 
I think this is going to really take this cup up a notch and help it um, look more realistic. So now I'm ready to um, adhere my top uh, mug die cut. And notice that I'm only putting glue on the outer edge of my die. That's in order to make sure that my pocket remains unglued and then I can stick my um, tuck my little marshmallows down in there. So I'm going to put an acrylic block on top of that mug and give it a little bit of time to all, adhere all the layers together. While that's happening, I'm going to go ahead and do a little, put a little bit of um, ink blending on my marshmallows to make them look toasted. I did go ahead and cut marshmallows out of both white and pink um, cardstock because you can find marshmallows in um, pastel colors in the grocery store. So I thought it would be cute to have some pink and white marshmallows tucked into our, uh, our mugs. So I'm just going to come in with some vintage photo distress ink, regular distress ink, and just add a little bit of toasting effect to our marshmallows here. That'll um, just really add and add to the depth and dimension that these marshmallows are going to bring to our completed um, project. So now that all the mug pieces are adhered, as well as the marshmallows being inked up, I'm going to kind of try out some placement and see where I like uh, the different pieces of this uh, card to come together. Um, notice that I've got the, the hearts there. I'm going to adhere those hearts to the mugs. I'm using some Barely Arts glue, and you guys know how much I love that glue. By the way, I did cut the same slit into the red mug before I adhered it all together, but I did that off camera. And now I'm going to adhere the red mug to, I'm sorry, the red heart to the pink mug. These hearts just add so much cuteness to these mugs. Do you see those brown ovals over at the top left of the screen? Those are uh, what represent the beverage that's inside your mug. So you can make that whatever color you want to make it. I chose to make it brown because this is going to be some hot cocoa, or at least that's what it's representing for me because, again, we're going to put some marshmallows in there. And uh, so I'm going to glue one of these brown ovals onto each mug, and that's, again, going to represent some hot chocolate, hot cocoa. So we've got our beverage um, die cuts in both of our mugs. Now it's time to start laying out the little marshmallows to kind of see where I want them to be. So I die cut um, six pink marshmallows and six white marshmallows. And if I divide them up evenly, that'll be six marshmallows in each cup, three of each color. Now trying to get the marshmallows tucked down into the mug, it was a tight squeeze in that area because there's a lot of layers going on here. But I was able to use my X-Acto knife and kind of wiggle the area um, up enough to get my um, die cuts, uh, the uh, marshmallows, tucked down into the little slit that I had created. So I'm going to leave my um, X-Acto knife in there to kind of give me a little bit of wedge. And then I'm going to use my reverse tweezers, or my fingers, <laughs> to kind of tuck those marshmallows down into there. And don't you think that makes this, this mug so, so cute to have those little marshmallows popping out or peeking out of the, of the mug and the hot chocolate? I think this is just the cutest little detail that provides so much personality to this, uh, this coffee mug, or this, in this case, hot chocolate mug. So once I get all the marshmallows placed, I'm going to bring that Barely Arts glue back in again and kind of tuck my nozzle behind some of those marshmallows, behind all of the marshmallows actually. And um, this is how I'm going to adhere them because I don't want to move them. I don't want to take them out and put some glue on them and then stick them back in. I really like the placement that they're in right now. So I'm just going to pull the marshmallows back a little bit and squeeze a little tidbit of glue um, liquid adhesive behind those uh, marshmallows to adhere them down. And then that sixth marshmallow, I'm going to put some adhesive on the top of that and adhere that and get my cute little stack of marshmallows going again. 
use those reverse tweezers to kind of clamp them down, clamp the marshmallows down, make sure they adhere good. Now I'm going to move on to the pink uh, mug and I'm going to do the exact same thing with tucking the marshmallows below the little um, slit that I made and having them peeking out, uh, out, of, out of the mug. Now I'm going to adhere this final marshmallow down on our red mug and that's going to complete the adhering of the marshmallows. I, I just think that those marshmallows have taken this these mugs to another level. So let's figure out the placement of our mugs. I kind of like where the handles, um, of course they're going to be opposite of each other, but where they kind of overlap, the red one overlaps the pink mug just a tiny bit so i think that's where i'm going to place that red mug happy with that placement so i'm going to go ahead and put some liquid adhesive on the back of this pink mug and secure it to my card base or the card panel rather getting that placed down press it in place I'm going to put an acrylic block on top of that pink mug to weight it down a little bit and make sure that it secures to the um, car panel nicely. So now we're going to adhere the red mug. So because that red mug is going to be kind of on top of the pink mug just a little bit, I'm going to use some foam squares on the back of the pink mug. I'm sorry, back of the red mug. And these are some thinner foam squares, so there's not they're not going to be sitting up too too high um, off of the off of the card. So I'm going to put a couple of thin foam uh, foam squares. These happen to be from Stampin' Up. I've mentioned before that these are my favorite foam uh, adhesives to use for dimension. And that's going to notice I didn't put any near the handle because the handle is the part that's going to be overlapping on the pink mug. So I'm going to pull the backers off of these uh, foam squares and adhere this red mug to the card base. I added just a touch of liquid glue to the handle of the red mug just to make sure that it's, so when I press it down, it also is secured by um, securing it to the pink mug. So the, the words or the sentiment, I'm going to lay those across our mugs to be kind of like Ray Dunn mugs. So I'm going to put the love on the pink mug since it's at the top and put the you on the red mug because it's at the bottom. So it's going to say love you. And again, coming in with the Barely Arts glue, that fine tip nozzle is, is my favorite. It, gets, it allows me to get glue into the smallest of places. I'm going to adhere the U and now I'm going to come in and do the love. Press that into place. Now we've got our sentiment laid down. So I did go ahead and cut a couple of extra hearts and I wasn't going to add those at, um, initially. But then I decided to know I do want to go ahead and add those because it'll take up some of that extra space that kind of appeared blank. It's going to take up some of that space and it just, again, makes it takes the card to another level. I'm going to give the hearts a little bit of character by adding um, some little highlights to them using a white gel pen. Uh, this is a number 10 jelly roll and it never fails me. Great little additions to the hearts there. I did want to have the panel popped up a little bit from the card base. So I did decide to add some foam tape to the back of our panel. I always love for my card bases to be nice and sturdy. So my preferred card stock of choice for card bases is Accent Opaque 120 pound weight card stock. And now that I've secured my panel to the to the card base, this card is complete. 
I want to thank you for joining me for another video on my YouTube channel. You can always find me here on YouTube as well as on Instagram and Facebook at The Delta Crafter. Be sure to stop by my website, thedeltacrafter.com, for additional cards and other ideas for card making. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Until next time, everyone, enjoy!